In this video, we're going to calibrate an 8000 series cart with the X35 monitor. So, before we do anything, we're going to have to set up a few things inside the monitor so we can get ready to calibrate. So, we'll go into our scene rate controller screen. We'll bring out the tanks that we want to calibrate. We're going to have to put the proper products into those tanks that we're going to be calibrating for. So, today we're going to be calibrating tank number one. We have floor dry in that tank. So what we'll do is we'll touch on tank one, we'll bring it out to the big portion of the screen, and then where it has your last product that you have in there, or it says select product, we'll go ahead and we'll touch on that button. Now it'll bring out this screen, where on the top line it says product name, so if you touch on it, it'll show you the products list that you have built prior to seating or from years past. If not, you have to go in and press new product. But we're going to go down and we're going to find the product that we have in our product or in our tank and that was floor dry. So we'll just touch on floor dry. Press OK. Below that you'll have your rate increment so you can put in a rate increment when you hit that plus, plus or minus sign up or down how much it goes up, your rate. And then you have preset rate 1 today you want to change it, just touch on it. Today we'll calibrate for 80 pounds. Preset rate 2 if you want to put one in there. And then below that you have your product density. The only thing we use product density for is how much physical product we can put in each one of these tanks. If you want to figure out what your product density is, find one of your calibration nails. If you fill this rate full of product level to the top and weigh it, this pail is 1.04 of a cubic foot. So now all we have to do is calculate off that 0 0.04, and now we have pounds per cubic feet that we can enter in to each one of our products if we want. And then below that is your cal factor. Your cal factor is what we're looking for in the calibration process. We're trying to figure out how many pounds of product comes out of that metering auger for one revolution. If you're starting with a new product, you may notice that it's at zero. If it's set to zero, you're going to have to change it because it doesn't know what to spin to and it needs a starting factor. So depending on what you have for a metering auger in your tank, you'll have to put in a starting cal factor. So depending on the metering auger, so if you have a low output, start at 0.1. If you have a double flight, 0.2. Single flight, 0.3. And a high output, 0.4. And to enter that in, just hit the calibration button. You'll have to go up to manual entry. Now we can enter that cal factor. And today we have a double flight, so I'm going to put in 0.2. Once I have that in there, press OK. Puts me back to my product list. And now I have everything set up in there. I can go ahead and I can press OK. It'll ask you if you want to set your preset rate one is the requested rate, I'll just say yes. Now our tank is set up for the calibration. Now we'll have to hit up, bring out our configuration tab, which is the wrench and the gear. And before we leave the car, we're going to have to make sure that we have a manual speed in there. Right now it's set to zeros, and if it's set to zero, again, it doesn't know what to spin to, so it won't allow you to calibrate. So we'll hit the manual speed button. Then where it's highlighted manual speed, just bring it out and we'll enter a speed that you consistently seat at. So today we'll do five mile an hour. Now it's in there, so now when we go into the calibration wizard, it'll make this thing think that it's doing five mile an hour. Then from there we'll hit multi-tank calibration, automatic calibration. And now what it's done is it put it into our calibration wizard. Just read and go on from there. It says we're doing a granular calibration. Press next to begin. We hit next. Now you can see that our monitor is set up. We're in calibration. So before we leave the tractor cab, go ahead and turn on our fan one circuit. So coming to the back of the cart, when you get back here, your fan will be running. What we'll want to do is we'll want to turn it off of the fan on the selector. Put it on to the auger. That does is it puts all of our oil to the auger or our metering circuit to allow us to calibrate. Then with the 8000 series current, 
grab your digital scale that comes with it. With that scale, it has the capability of holding a tear weight. Get that tear weight into it, turn it on, hang one of your pails, and then press and hold the on zero button for about 10 seconds. Once the 10 seconds is done, let go of that on zero, and it should show zeros on that digital scale, and then when you take the pail off, it should show you the weight that it's gonna subtract off of your sample. Then from there, we'll have to crawl under, taking out our downspouts out of the airstream and putting them into the calibration spouts, depending on which tanks we're calibrating. And then we're gonna have to charge the auger, because we've started a new calibration with a new product, there's no product in that metering auger, so we don't want any false revolutions with no product coming out, because that'll put out our cal factor. So we'll go ahead and we'll just turn on the tanks that we want to calibrate. So we're doing tank number one. We'll touch it. It's in standby now, just waiting for us to hit the play button. And we'll go ahead and we'll hit that play button. Once we get the consistent product out, we can hit stop. Now our metering auger is charged, but you'll notice on the monitor that we have an estimated weight and revolutions that we don't want to keep, but we don't have to run back to the tractor cab to reset them. We can do that from the side of the cart by hitting our prime zero button. We'll just touch it, green light shows that it did what we asked it to do, and now if you look at the monitor, there'll be zeros in both of those locations. So we'll grab a fresh pail. We have that fresh pail again, just selecting the tanks that we want to calibrate. So tank one is in standby. All we have to do again now is just hit the play button. If you're doing a multi-tank calibration and one fills up faster than the other, just go ahead and turn off the corresponding switch to that tank. If you want to do about two-thirds of a pail, the larger the sample size, the more accurate your cal factor is going to be. So once we get that roughly two-thirds of a pail, we can either turn off the tank switch or we can turn off by hitting stop. Now we'll turn on our digital scale, grab our sample. We can get our sample weight. Now that I have my sample weight of 6.7, now I have my sample weights, let's go back into the monitor or we'll have to finish up the process. So from this screen there's no way for you to put the weight into it so you're going to just have to press next. Once we get to the next screen you'll have your highlighted ones that showed revolutions so you go ahead and put your weight in there just touch on it. Now we can enter our weight which is 6.7 and then once you have all your weights in that screen, then you can go ahead and press next. Then in that final screen, it'll show you your old cal factor, your new cal factor, and the percent difference between the two. Because Floor Dry is a new product and we put a starting cal factor in there, you'll notice that our new cal factor is 49% out. But we know we didn't do anything wrong in our calibration process, so we're gonna wanna save that new cal factor by just touching where it says not saved. Now what it does is it puts that new cal factor on that product and we'll go out and we'll verify that that new cal factor is actually what we want. So we'll go ahead and press okay. And then we can go back to the back of the cart and we can go ahead and we can verify that new cal factor. So you'll notice that I didn't go into calibration from tractor cab, with the 8000 series cart, we can actually go into calibration from the side of the cart as well. You just have to remember that your products are set up properly when you do go into there. So all we have to do, push the A button and let go. Green light tells us that it's done the functions that we've asked. And then we can go ahead and throw the bail under. Turn on the tanks that we want to run product out. And hit the play button. 
resources and our campus of metering and auger exchange because we have a new belt backer on this frog. And again, we're going to get a good sample size. Again, either pushing the tank or the play stop button. Turning on our digital scale. Grabbing our sample. Now we got our sample weight. It's 14.3. So now we can go back into our monitor. Again, and enter that in. Again, we can't put weight into the screen, we have to press next. It's highlighted the tank that we ran product out of, tank one. And we'll put in the sample weight that we just got from this calibration, which is 14.3. Once you have your weights in there again, go ahead and press next. And then it'll show you your old cal factor new cal factor and the percent difference again which you can see on our screen the percent difference is zeros because our cal factor never changed if it had a difference it would show you and then also it it put a button there so you could save that new cal factor but because it never changed we verified that it is the cal factor we want to go seeding with all we have to do now is press okay so now the monitor is ready to go so we just have to come back to the back of the cart Put stuff away, crawl underneath our tank, put our calibration spouts back into the airstream that we want so we don't solid see the strip. And then once we have everything put away, the last thing we want to do is go ahead and change it from auger back over to fans, puts that machine ready to 